Hello, how's everyone doing? I was just jotting down some notes here that I actually wanted to put on the chalkboard, but then I figured why don't I just explain the notes. So you guys can just follow along. This is kind of a recap of some of the things we've been working on um, over the last couple of weeks. The tricky thing that seemed to hang out most people is this timeline down here, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's first look up here. Deet site, time. So we learned datum, a date, not like a date where you meet someone that you're interested in, but the date on a calendar. Notice der Kalender, mit einem großen K, auf Deutsch. Ein Treffen would be a meeting, or eine Vereinbarung would be a date, eine Verabredung. Uh, Vereinbarung would actually be an agreement, but eine Verabredung would be a date where you go to meet someone for like coffee and such. Die Uhrzeit. Die Uhrzeit. Uhr is clock or time of day. Without the H is a prefix. Uhr, it means kind of like ancient. You put it before, say, like your grandfather, and then you have a great grandfather and great, 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 great grandfather. That is done in German by using Uhr. Uranen, but again, without the H. So Uralt means ancient. Alt. A-L-T just means old. Uralt means ancient. Uhrzeit. So it's the time of day, however, because we're dealing with Uhr, the clock, time. So you can go from 1 bis 12 or from 1 bis 24. So you can go from 1 to 12 or twice around the clock to 24. And we've practiced how to tell time that way. Zum Beispiel, es ist jetzt... 11 Uhr abends would be the same as saying, es ist jetzt 23 Uhr. Um, and note the difference there. Maybe that's something you guys can jot down in the notes. What's the difference between 11 Uhr abends und 23 Uhr? Or is there one? Es ist eine Tageszeit. It's a time of day. Die Tageszeit. Weil, because, die Zeit. The time is feminine, so die Zeit. Down here we see Jahreszeit, time of year, die Jahreszeit. Hier drüben sind die Jahreszeiten, plural. Die Tageszeiten, the times of day, morgens, mittags und abends, morning, midday and evening. And the seasons, die Jahreszeiten, der Frühling, der Sommer, der Herbst und der Winter. This is all stuff you guys should know. Spring, summer, autumn and um, winter. So that's one category of time we've looked at. Now what we've done, das große Pfeilchen here, the big little arrow, to our first little timeline. You see there's the origin right here, time is linear, so we're going this way to the right. Im gesprochenen Deutsch, in spoken German. Sprechen, to speak. Gesprochen, the participle thereof. Spoken, so to speak. Sprechen, gesprochen, spoken German. Compared to down here, grammatisch. This is grammatically seen. Uh, and we'll examine that momentarily. But here are some words that'll help you guys. Früher, jetzt und später. Right here. Earlier, like früh, you know, early. Like frühstück, you breakfast. Jetzt, right now. Und später, like late, spät, später, later. That's how people actually speak, you know. This is just how we speak about what we're going to do with verbs. Um, so it's more technical. But früher, jetzt und später are words you guys are actually going to hear. Just like gestern, heute und morgen. So yesterday, today and tomorrow. Similarly, other words in the past, present and future are vorher, momentan und nachher, which is beforehand at this moment and later. Also, damals, nun, und dann. Back then, now, and then. Those are also words, and there's other examples of this. Um, by the way, if you want to say the day before yesterday, you take this prefix right here, for gestern, and just like we were talking about your Urgroßvater, your great-grandfather, for gestern was the day before yesterday, for for gestern, the day before, <clears throat> excuse me, the day before that day, and so on. 
And if we're going to go forward, we just say uba, the prefix uba, like the uh, car shuttling company, uba. And we stick it right here in front of Morgan. Uh, that came out kind of crooked. Sorry, guys. So uba Morgan will be the day after tomorrow. And so on. Uba, 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 uba Morgan. And we can use this to say the week after next week. Über nächste Woche. Oder vorletzte. Now we use letzte, last. Und nächste. Those should also go in here for past. Um, let's see if I can squeeze this in here. Letzte. Uh, I'm not sure if I put the T in the right. Yeah, I think that was right. Letzte Woche. Nächste Woche. Sorry, guys. Nächste Woche. Um... Yeah, last week, next week, der letzte, the last, der nächste, the next. But let's look down here now, real quick, because I don't want to make this video too long. Die Vergangenheit, the past tense. Die Gegenwart, the present tense. Die Zukunft, the future tense. These are the grammatic expressions of what we're talking about. So in der Gegenwart haben wir das Präsens. Let's go down this way first and examine the present. So das Präsens is the grammatic term for the present. Die Gegenwart is a little bit more colloquial. People actually will say gegenwärtig, presently. Turn this into an adjective, you know. Put some umlauts on there. I and a G here and lowercase it. But that's the present. We have der Aktiv und der Passiv, the active voice and the passive voice. So der Aktiv is when you are the acting agent of whatever is being done. The passive is when you're receiving the action or you're witnessing someone else receive it. So grammatically speaking, we switch subject and direct object. So if you are the doer doing something to someone, with someone, or at a location, etc., etc., whatever the information is that you are relating in your statement, you're the subject. If, however, the thing becomes the subject, and we put you in the position of the direct object, then you're in the passive tense. Easy example, I eat the cake, the cake is eaten by me. So active voice, passive voice. Now, the reason we have this little trunky line over here is if we take one giant leap into the future, we have das Futur eins. There's also das Futur 2, but we'll look at that further down the road, not in today's video. But I just put it in here because if you go to the future and talk about a time that will have occurred at this point, but has not yet occurred at this point, that's future 2. So the example I gave in class, if you are talking about right now you're 15, you're talking about how when you're 18 you're going to drive across the country because you will have taken your driver's license at 16. That's future too. Um, but let's focus on just regular future. To say something in the future, we use the word werde. Ich werde, du wirst, er sie es wird. Wir werden, ihr werdet und sie werden. And the participle um, of the actual word. So ich werde morgen frühstücken und Abend essen. Aber ich werde morgen nicht Mittag essen. There you go. I will eat breakfast and dinner tomorrow, but I will not eat lunch. Ich werde. Wirst du morgen Mittag essen? Will you eat lunch tomorrow? You see, you see that's um, the conjugation chart we're looking at. Now, if you look at the third person here. Es wird getan. Oder man tut etwas. It's another way one does something is a way to use the active to make a passive expression one does something but es wird getan is the third person in the conjugation of this that's how you make the passive voice so ich spiele aber es wird gespielt i play actively oder er spielt it can be in third person too he plays he's still the active player but es wird gespielt it is being played is um the game that's being played is in the passive Versus I'm playing the game or he's playing the game. Now, take a hop backward in die Vergangenheit, the past tense. 
we have das perfect, also called the conversational past, and das preteritum, the preterite, used to be called the imperfect. Also the narrative past, because oftentimes in storytelling, this is what we choose over this. This is more when we speak. For this, we need a um, participle. That's perfect. Ich habe etwas getan. Das getan is the participle of tun. I have done something. But ich habe gesagt. Gesagt. Prefix ge before sagen. Gesagt. I have said. Versus ich sagte. I said. Oder ich tat. I did. That's the preterite. Both of them are in the same location in time, however. Now, if you take another leap back, you have das Plusquamperfekt, and that's something we're not going to deal with at all today. I just want you guys to be aware of that. That's when you have had something happen in the past. You're telling a story, taking a couple leaps back. And also the active and the passive voice, und so weiter, and so on. I am now above the 10-minute limit that I originally didn't even want to cross. But I hope that gives you an overview of all the tenses we've been working with. You have to learn the conjugation charts. Again, werde and the infinitive of the word. And uh, habe, what I've been, are the helping words am or have um, that you use here for the perfect tense. Or the conjugation charts, again, for the preterite. They often change a bit. For example, ich bin, ich war, that's an irregular one. You just have to memorize those things. And we'll be using them more and more in our exercises. So again, I hope this helped clear things up just a bit. And I'll see you guys in the next video. What we're going to do here is take things into perspective like this. Like we'll deal with one of these at a time, you know. So instead of this whole timeline, that's what I wanted you guys to get out of this. We'll examine like one place. One place. There's a difference between these two, even though they look similar. That was one of the assignments, and I'll get into greater detail about that in our next video. That's it for today, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Bye-bye.